It's real early here. I'm riding a Segway Mini Pro made by Ninebot China, licensed from the Dean Cayman invention from Maryland or Massachusetts, somewhere in the northeast where that genius inventor lives. It uses a self-balancing inverted pendulum motor control and algorithm developed as a conglomerate between three industrial Chinese, or excuse me, Japanese firms and Dean Cayman's core intellectual property. The original Segway was a behemoth 130 pound operation that cost 6,000 US dollars and could only go 12 miles per hour. During its early development, it was hailed as a revolutionary transportation device before it was known what it was. Unfortunately, $6,000 for a vehicle that goes 12 miles per hour might be a revolution in a ultra congested mega city with perfectly smooth sidewalks and very little traffic or extreme traffic congestion that gives them advantage, but not in America and countries like America where wide open highways require vehicles to be able to travel up to 70 miles per hour safely. If you go slower than that and you're not in a semi-truck, you risk getting run off the road, hit, or damaged. So on an engineered sidewalk like this concrete pouring sequence that I'm riding on here, approaching an asphalt section, yeah, this small thousand dollar magnesium alloy Segway Mini Pro works perfectly fine. Here's some more concrete into asphalt, there's a crosswalk, and back onto concrete slabs. These were poured in 2018, so they're in perfect condition. The trees are relatively new, so they haven't distorted. The roots haven't distorted the geometry of the sidewalk, and you see the asphalt is in excellent condition. On surfaces like this, the only problem you encounter is that the lack of suspension on the tiny 23 pound Segway translates each one of those transitions between the blocks into mechanical perturbation of the base you can feel in your feet. I guess if you like that kind of vibrating input to your feet, it's perfectly fine. That being said, if you do that for a long time, you're going to feel it. I'm closing in on 40, I'm not 23 anymore, like the weight and pounds of the vehicle I'm riding. But I am 164 pounds riding a 23 pound looking ion powered dual electric motor vehicle here, which is also known as an electronic personal mobility assist device or an EP pad. And what that is is a standing wheelchair. So at walking speeds below two miles per hour, you're actually allowed to take these into grocery stores, shopping malls, anywhere a person can walk, you can ride the Segway Mini Pro. There's newer versions, they only cost 500 US dollars. They're still made by Ninebot, but they replaced the magnesium ion or magnesium alloy frame with a steel frame and then plastic heavy construction after that. So it's a little heavier, has a slightly smaller battery and less performance. The firmware on this has gradually reduced the top speed from 15 miles per hour all the way down to 10.1 after our litigious heavy Americans sued Segway and Ninebot winning a judgment that forced Ninebot to reduce the top speed in the firmware. Frankly speaking, if you're leaning forward, you're literally facing forward, you're just standing on this thing leaning forward, there's a tiller bar between your knees that you use and you push it to the left or right by pitching your knees inward and that's how you steer. To go forward, you lean forward. To go back, you lean back. To go left or right, you can just lean left or right and your knees will naturally hit the tiller. Here you can see I'm navigating a raised engineered pathway with synthetic decking and wood handrails. This is through a nature reserve that the developer of this apartment complex was required to complete as an ecological restoration project here in the city of Isabella. I'm approaching an ungodly overpriced storage complex owned by Rowley Properties. Some of these smaller units go for an excess of $400 a month. It's on a relatively flat grade right next to this river that you can see. This river is um, running at a pretty good pace right now due to an extreme amount of precipitation recently. You can really hear it. It's hard to see. This is at 5 a.m. That's why the beautiful sky glow. This is known as magic hour for photography. You get a lot of weird colors that you don't see at other times of the day. Though there's so much artificial lighting nearby that you really miss that natural effect. Though there's so much fog in the air that if there was any sunrise lighting effects, they're kind of minimized. Nonetheless, there's um, 
and engineered halfway to the edge of the road here, the city of Issaquah, uh, screen printed in some kind of a po white epoxamide, a frog on a bicycle. And uh, that's kind of a running joke on their trail network signs. I really like the city of Issaquah and hope that I can find an affordable house for Meg and I here, but sadly it's a very gentrified area and even modest housing can be in excess of 350,000. I'm talking about a small condo without a garage and parking on the street. A townhome with a garage close to where I'm filming right now goes for in excess of $800,000 in rundown condition, $650,000. Yeah, I know it's not just Western Washington and King County. There's a lot of expensive locales in the Northeast like New York City or Los Angeles and California, Tokyo and Japan, Beijing and China. Sometimes where an area is popular to live and especially where there's no local income tax, it can attract people with deep pockets or those that are referred to as well healed. In such locales, the real estate price can double in just a few years as it's done here in King County, making it almost impossible or very difficult for dual income, no children, first time buyers like Meg and I, even though we have a very modest or decent income combined, makes it very difficult for people like us to buy a house. And it makes it difficult for elderly people who retired in 1997 on incomes from back then to pay their property taxes. Shame on King County for not developing more housing and improving the inventory to reduce price pressure. But glad to live here, it's a beautiful area.